Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there. Welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine, your very favorite place for the latest scuba diving news and reviews. Today, I'm looking at tips for lightweight scuba travel. Traveling with all of your dive gear is tough enough trying to you know justify bringing even more scuba diving equipment instead of bringing clothes but there is good news and several tips and tricks that can help reduce the size and weight of your kit bag the first tip is that you don't need to bring your entire logbook. Uh, too many divers bring the entire diving history and every single cert card that they have ever achieved but no, just bring your highest cert card and any relevant specialties on that trip and just as many blank pages as you're going to need for the trip or, you know, just be modern and download the dives. There are plenty of digital apps today where you can just download your dives to a smart device through Bluetooth from your dive computer. This video is sponsored by scuba equipment superstore scuba.com. Uh, remember to visit scuba.com when you're considering your next equipment purchase. Uh, but let's go traveling and uh, learn about some tips and tricks. The first thing is to check whether your airline offers extra baggage allowance for sporting equipment. Now, I've been on flights which have basically doubled my baggage allowance for free just because I was bringing my diving equipment. And all I really had to do at the airport is just unzip my bag. They could see the wetsuit on top and that was all the proof they needed. So this tends to be on longer flights and there may be some specific things nowadays that you have to do you have to fill out a form or something whilst you're booking but you're gonna kick yourself if you didn't bring equipment or clothing because you didn't know that you were actually allowed to bring a lot more with you but you just never check their website There are several things that you can do with your regulators to make them a bit lighter. Now, I'll always bring my own regulator over renting just because rental regulators aren't always great. I've had some bad experience with rental regulators. Uh, the first thing that you can do with your regulators is to swap out any rubber hoses for braided hoses. Braided hoses are far lighter. Uh, they're more flexible as well, which is quite nice. And they come in funky different colors as well. but Braided hoses are a lot lighter than rubber hoses, so they're better for travel. DIN regulators are also a lot lighter than their A-clamp alternatives because there's literally less metal, um, so you can save some weight there. It, it means that you're a bit more permanently swapping your first stage from A-clamp to DIN, but if you're really trying to make the lightest regulator possible, DIN is the best choice. If you're feeling extreme, you can remove your SPG and rely purely on your wireless air transmitter. Obviously, if your dive computer has wireless air capabilities, um, you can also remove your Octo as well. If you're feeling particularly Spartan, um, if you fit an alternate integrated inflator to your BCD, then you have your two second stages and your regulator is much, much lighter because you only have the primary that you're breathing from. You have the low pressure inflator hose going to your BCD and your alternate, that's a single hose now, and you don't even have an SPG, you just have a little transmitter attached onto it. That makes your regulators a lot lighter. Um, but if you wear your regulators as a necklace on the aeroplane, then uh, it, the weight doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, if you don't like the idea of wearing your regulator scarf, uh, then pack your regulators in the center of your bag with protection all around them so that they don't get crushed because, you know, baggage handlers. A travel specific BCD is usually your best choice here. Most manufacturers make lighter BCDs specifically for travel. They're made with thinner materials and some BCDs are modular as well. So you can remove some sections to help reduce the weight if you're really trying to cut down on weight. If you don't want to invest in a second BCD, then by all means, you can still bring your home BCD along. The important thing to remember is to drain any air and water out of the bladder. 
air inside of your BCD is just going to take up space in your bag and water inside the bladder. Yes, people do travel with water still left in their, um, their BCD and wonder why their bag is suddenly more heavy on the way back from a trip. Um, water inside of the bladder adds weight. So every time that you dump your gas underwater, yeah, sure, the air is coming out, but obviously the seawater is getting in. So at the end of the trip, be sure to just dump any water out of your BCD. Most divers do it after every dive, but especially when you're packing your bag, just kind of move your BCD around, see if you can hear any sloshing on the inside, and if in doubt, just, you know, vent. You have a range of lightweight fin options out there today that are a lot shorter and lighter as well. And if you really want to reduce as much weight as possible and you're diving in water warm enough, then full foot fins tend to be a lot lighter than the open hill alternatives. And of course you don't need to bring neoprene boots as well, so you're saving that. Your fins are great protection for the rest of your equipment. So when you're packing your bags, I tend to pack these either side of my bag as like walls to prevent things from damaging in the sides. If they have a lot of like blade angle to them, it can be a bit tricky, but they're still gonna protect the gear inside and give your bag a bit of shape and structure. Your mask is quite fragile uh, to especially bending and twisting forces. There's not a great deal that you can do to reduce the weight of your mask. Uh, so I'm mainly gonna be talking about packing tips with, uh, with masks. The first is to recycle that big clunky mask box. The classic design, it's, it's just big clunky. It takes up just too much space in a bag. They're great for stacking on dive center shelves, but not so great for travel. Sure, they are going to protect your mask, but they just take up far too much space. You can usually fit your mask into one of your foot pockets of your fins. Try to put the glass against the bottom of the foot pocket, which is usually the strongest part. And inside of the foot pocket, your mask doesn't move around. And more importantly, it doesn't bend or twist. If your mask doesn't fit in your foot pocket, then pad it and pack it as much as possible to prevent any kind of twisting forces or bending forces as well. My dive computer usually comes with me in the cabin. Uh, watch size dive computers can obviously be worn as a wristwatch. Uh, you may need to remove it for the body scanner, but you can wear your dive computer without getting too many funny looks and you don't run the risk of losing your dive computer if your bag goes missing. They also don't take up a huge amount of space in your carry-on, so it's easier to warrant packing your dive computer in your carry-on, especially with lithium ion batteries as well. That's something you do need to pay attention to. Um, the battery in your dive computer, if it does use a rechargeable lithium ion battery, then it needs to be in your carry-on. Airlines don't like batteries that can catch fire unattended. They'd much rather it be with you in your bag. So if it suddenly gets really hot, then someone notices as opposed to it being below deck and then fire can spread. Thinner and smaller shorties are quite easy to pack and rolling is better than folding to avoid creases. I tend to put the zipper downwards on whatever I'm folding it on, the, the floor or a table, uh, and then roll the wetsuit up from the ankles. When it's rolled up to the shoulders, then tuck the arms, and that just reduces the chances of creases in your shoulders, and then you can pack it wherever you need to. When you start getting into thicker wetsuits, like five but really seven mil it can be beneficial to rent a wetsuit wherever you're going they are more likely to have the right thickness suit for the local water temperature and thicker wetsuits are just plain heavy and bulky but if you are going to rent try to invest in a full body rash vest or at least a, a one mil wetsuit to avoid the rental suit from actually touching you because some rental suits can be a bit nasty.
If you're like me, uh, then you probably have two feet and you travel with two pairs of fins. Uh, one foot pocket is already packed with your diving mask. The other foot pocket is quite a good space for your DSMB and your spool. Similar to your BCD, make sure that you drain your DSMB as much as possible and roll it as neatly and tightly as possible. If you're minimizing weight, then you can get smaller travel. Uh, DSMBs, they're not as easy to spot in really high waves, but if you're diving somewhere nice and calm during the daytime, then it's really all you need. Spools are much smaller and lighter than reels, and of course they do come in really small petite sizes, like 5, 10, 15 meter spools. The plastic spools are a lot cheaper, uh, and they're slightly lighter than aluminium spools. But yeah, when you're packing it, you can just throw it in the bag. They're pretty hardy creatures, but there's a fair amount of wasted space in a foot pocket, so you might as well stow it in there. It's rare that you're going to need a huge steel dive knife. Obviously, you can't bring it in carry-on. Any bladed objects are banned from carry-on and need to be checked. That includes like uh, uh, line cutters and whatnot. They still have blades in them. So yeah, they're not going to be too happy if you try and bring that on carry-on. And you won't be able to argue because it has a blunt tip, it's safer. Um, there have been cases of some really large dive knives being removed from checked luggage as well. So double check your airline's policies on dive knives and whatnot. Usually if it's a sensible size dive knife and it's surrounded by a load of diving equipment, they won't think twice about it. But I'll always recommend divers bring some kind of cutting device on a trip though. So I think line cutter, safety shears, or just a really compact dive knife. That's all you really need for a bit of fishing line. And it's really hard for airport security scanning your check luggage to think that it's excessive. Similar to your dive computer, anything with a lithium battery needs to be in your carry-on so that you can monitor it. Most commercial flights allow power banks with up to 27,000 milliamp hours or 100 watts, uh, or sorry, watt hours. In some cases, you need the operator's approval to bring power banks with more than 100 watt hours. Double check your dive torch's battery and your airline's policy on battery size. You don't want to have your torch confiscated because the battery is too large. Um, it's going to be more of an issue if you have uh, a, a huge battery or multiple devices, uh, like a power bank for your laptop and other rechargeable devices. Most rechargeable torches, the small like handheld ones are gonna be fine. It's really the big like umbilical torches that have the really big power packs um, that you're probably gonna need to check. A lot of dive gear today is made specifically for traveling. So it's smaller and lightweight, and you can really feel the difference between a tough BCD that's made for diving at home and one of these like lighter choices, but you do need to care for them a little bit more. The fabric is thinner, so you can't go just jamming your way through tight passageways and shipwrecks and piling gear on top of it because you're probably gonna develop a leak in your BCD bladder before long. If you are in the market for any new dive Diving equipment, be sure to head over to today's sponsor, scuba.com. They have a whole ton of dive gear for sale on their website, and they have two dive centers that you can visit in the US, one in California and one in New York. Otherwise, remember to check out our website, scubadivingmag.com, for the latest scuba diving news and reviews, and subscribe to the channel here on YouTube if you're not subscribed. Thank you for watching, everybody, and of course, safe diving.